Hello out there! Welcome to Wake Up to the Bible. I'm Daniel Kaplan. I'm here with my father, Dr. Kaplan. Together we're going through the books of the law, Genesis through Deuteronomy, over the course of this year, a little bit every day. Today we're going to be reading Genesis 42, uh, 16 through Genesis 43, 15. And uh, for those of you who know your portions, you will realize that I accidentally ended a little bit earlier yesterday. So I apologize on behalf of whoever of my ancestors came up with this portion reading. I did not do you justice. Although I did think it worked out pretty okay. I'd like to make a comment. <clears throat> Sometimes these are special event like a bar mitzvah mm -hmm. and they want more people to be called up to the readings uh -huh. so they actually break them up in smaller pieces oh, to have more you. people come up I, I i saw that happen many many years ago i was i was at a hasidic gathering of, of a group called the boston or hasidian believe it or not there's a dynasty that came out of boston massachusetts originally the way they were from czechoslovakia which of course doesn't exist anymore mm -hmm. i guess from the czech republic the czech republic yeah well, anyway, but they kept they kept breaking it up so more and more people could be called up to the reading, you know, to honor, I guess, various family members or for whatever it was. So are you like circling the wagons for me? I appreciate. Yeah, right. It. I'm <laughs> defending my son, my, my son's reputation. I I, I just <clears throat> messed up. It's okay, yeah. but 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 it worked out. It's you know, yeah. it all it all comes out in the wash, as they say. All right, so um, we'll be reading from the Robert Alter translation, and then we will um comment afterwards. And I'm gonna make sure I get this right. We're gonna end on forty three. 15. Right, just to be exact, I don't know if that group came from the Czech Republic or for, or from Slovakia, but it used to be Czechoslovakia and it broke up. So I don't know which part of the, you know, which yeah. part they came from. Remember what I was saying about pedantic people not making very good leaders? This would be a case in point as to why this is the case. All right, uh, let's, let's go forward. Uh, send one of you to bring your brother. And as for the rest of you, mm -hmm. you will be detained and your you will be detained and your words will be tested as to whether the truth is with you. And if not by Pharaoh, you must be spies. And he put them under guard for three days. And Joseph said to them on the third day, do this and live for I fear God. If you're honest, let one of your brothers be detained in this very guardhouse, and the rest of you go forth and bring back provisions to stave off the famine in your homes. And your youngest brother you shall bring to me, that your words may be confirmed, and you need not die. And so they did. And they said, each to his brother, Alas, we are guilty for our brother, whose mortal distress we saw when he pleaded with us, and we did not listen. This is why this distress has overtaken us. Then Reuben spoke out to them in these words, Didn't I say to you, commit no offense through the boy? And you would not listen. And now, look, his blood is requited. And they did not know that Joseph understood, for there was an interpreter between them. And he turned away from them and wept and returned to them. And he spoke to them and he took Simeon from them and placed, the, placed him in fetters before their eyes. And Joseph gave orders to fill their baggage with grain and to put back their silver into each one's pack and to give them supplies for the way. So he did for them. And they loaded their provisions on their donkeys and they set out from there. Then one of them opened his pack to give provender to his donkey at the encampment. And he saw his silver and look, it was in the mouth of his bag. And he said to his brothers, my silver has been put back and look, it's actually in my bag. And they were dumbfounded and trembled each before his brother saying, what is this that God has done to us? And they came to Jacob, their father, to the land of Canaan, and they told him all that had befallen them, saying, The man who was lord of the land spoke harshly to us and made us out to be spies in the land. And we said to him, We are honest. We would never be spies. Twelve brothers we are, the sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is now with our father in the land of Canaan. And the man who is lord of the land said to us, By this shall I know if you are honest. One of your brothers leave with me and your provisions against the famine in your uh, homes. Take and go, and bring your youngest brother to me, that I may know you are spies, but are honest, not spies, but are honest. I shall give you back your brother, and you can trade in the land. And just as they were emptying their packs, look, each one's bundle of silver was in his pack. And they saw their bundles, both they and their father, and were afraid. And Jacob their father said to them, me you have bereaved. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more, and Benjamin you would take? It, it is I who bear it all. And Reuben spoke to his father, saying, My two sons you may put to death if I do not bring him back to you. 
Place him in my hands, and I will return him to you. And he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he alone remains, and should harm befall him on the way you are going, you would bring down my gray head in sorrow to Sheol. And the famine grew grave in the land, and it happened when they had eaten up the provisions they had brought from Egypt that their father said to them, Go back, buy us some food. And Judah said to him, saying, The man firmly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you are going to send our brother with us, we may go down and buy you food. But if you are not going to send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. And Israel said, why have you done me this harm to tell the man you had another brother? And they said, The man firmly asked us about ourselves and our kindred, saying, Is your father still living? Do you have a brother? And we told him in response to these words, Could we know he would say, Bring down your brother? And Judah said to Israel his father, Send the lad with me, and let us rise and go, that we may live and not die, neither we nor you nor our little ones. I will be his pledge, from my hand you may seek him. If I do not bring him to you and set him before you, I will bear the blame to you for all time. For had we not tarried by now, we could, come, we could have come back twice." And Israel, their father, said to them, If it must be so, do this. Take of the best yield of the land in your baggage, and bring down to the man as tribute some balm and some honey, gum and laudanum, pistachio nuts and almonds. And double the silver take in your hand, and the silver that was put back in the mounts of your bags bring back in your hand. Perhaps it was a mistake. And your brother take and rise and go back to the man. And may El Shaddai grant you mercy before the man that he discharge you, discharge to you your other brother and Benjamin. As for me, if I must be bereaved, I will be bereaved. And the men took his tribute and double the silver they took in their hand and Benjamin. And they rose and went down to Egypt and stood in Joseph's presence. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So that was a longer segment, but it does make sense. You know, there's a bookend there. We're, you know, we're continuing the story. So, um, interesting things. Hold on here. Let me see what I was getting at. Different things came to me. All right. One thing is interesting is you the speculation. Getting into speculation. Um, why does he keep Simeon and not Reuben? Because Reuben is the firstborn. And you might speculate that it's because Reuben specifically reveals to Joseph that he did, in fact, try to appeal for his life. And so Joseph kind of looks past him and keeps Simeon instead possible. Simeon might have been the one that suggested that they, that they kill him. Mm. He had that kind of personality. Yeah, based on earlier, right, with, uh, right, yeah. with Dinah. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh... To me, it's very interesting that they, they, they tell their dad, you know, that um, we are, uh, let me see, uh, we are 12, uh, let me see, uh, yeah, and the young, uh, and uh, one is no more. Mm -hmm. That would, and to tell their dad that, it would seem to indicate that that means he's dead. Because why would they tell their dad we don't know where he is? That would be terrible. Well, they didn't say that to their dad. They said that that's what they told him. I, yeah, but why Why would they tell their dad that that's what they told him? They should tell their their. In other words, they should have told their dad we told him he was dead. Because that's what they told their father. That's oh, what... I got you. So if they didn't mean he was dead, then that's weird. It does imply that that's what they were trying to tell Joseph. That yeah, he was another, dead. In, in, that's a good point. So whatever that saying meant, it would imply that. They well, thought there's dead. one other possibility. They they never really saw Joseph's body. They saw the coat and mm -hmm. the blood, and so the dad assumed he was dead, and they all assumed he was dead. But they didn't absolutely know. Mm -hmm. And so they could right. have still spoken vaguely. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt yeah. because they didn't absolutely know. Yeah. But then he says later. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Reuben is kind of emotional here. That that that's not really a good solution. But, <laughs> But his personality is somewhat volatile, as you'll see later yeah. in Genesis 49. Right. But um, also, uh, there's a comment he makes that would almost imply that he suspects them of, 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 of regarding Joseph. 
because he says, me, you have bereaved. Yeah. Joseph is no more and Simeon is no more. Yeah, and Benjamin, what, what, what you, you would take. Is, I know. That's one reason why I don't think he wanted Benjamin to go with them in the first place. I, in other words, it seems that he said you should have been more careful. Something. Yeah. He's although, holding them responsible in some way. Although Joseph, sent, he sent him on his own up there. Yeah. And it could have happened on the way or whatever. But yeah. somehow he seems to blame them. So that's something to look into further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that is interesting. That is interesting. Um, yeah, but in, in what you're saying about Reuben, obviously this is no solution at all. This is very against what you see elsewhere in the Bible about swearing and making oaths about different stuff. I mean, what if something had happened? I mean, obviously his two sons shouldn't bear that sort of ridiculous situation and Reuben wouldn't have to go through with it. So you have to be very careful with the sort of things that you say because... There's no reason to talk like that. You know, it's kind of like, you know, it's like what Jesus says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you if you have to go out on a limb and be like, well, if this happens and blah, 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 then what kind of person are you? You know, people should trust what you say to the point where you don't have to use such ridiculous, you know, things in order to prove that what you're saying is honest. And, and uh, Judah now steps forward mm -hmm. and, and takes responsibility. This right. This is important in, yeah. in, in the account. Right. Yeah. Now, what is interesting is if you want to go kind of Christology with it, it does kind of, it's similar to the, the stuff at the crucifixion, right? Where it says, you know, the bearing the blame of it. It's kind of interesting. I don't know. What do you think? Is that a reach? Or do you think that's interesting? No, no, I, I wouldn't think so. I think that's just kind of interesting. It kind of shows the personality, right? There's a certain amount of, yeah, we are willing to bear the responsibility. And I think that's, that is a positive thing you can say. And I'll, and this is a little bit different. This is a better reaction than, than Ruben. You know, he's right. just saying, you know, I will bear the blame. That's not, that, that's more appropriate. You know, you know, I'm going to bear responsibility is a much better and a more, whatever you want to say, converted re sort of reaction, you know, more biblically minded reaction than some brand, you know, some other people with no connection are going right. to die. Like that's, that's terrible. And Judah was the one that had, had, had the idea to sell him. So now he's mm -hmm. the one that's taking responsibility for Benjamin. Right. Uh, it's interesting. Jo Jacob was obviously a prosperous person. Yeah. And even though they didn't have the basic, they didn't uh, have food, basic food stuff. They did have other things. Yep that they could bring down there, right. like honey and so on. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, you'll notice the kind of things that they have. I mean, they have nuts. Nuts can sustain you for a while. Obviously, honey doesn't really, you know. So it's not going to be enough to keep you from starving. Um, there's a, there's an interesting uh, prophecy later. About... And none of those things were a staple. You know, back then, you know, your staple was something like bread. You you didn't, you didn't, you know, you didn't, you didn't, you um, didn't, uh, almonds and pistachio there's just there's just not abundant of a crop you can't sustain uh, yourself on the it. honey could be also coming from dates but um mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is there is a prophecy later that times would be difficult and that uh, this young man who would be born this is an isaiah that he would be sustained by honey and butter Interesting. In words, that, that's all that's all <laughs> that would be available would be would be that but that could keep him alive that yeah. was prophecy the uh, isaiah 7 Honey and butter. Yeah. Interesting. And both are animal products, which is kind of interesting. Well, yeah, but the honey could be from dates. It's possible. Uh, though that's true. It's yeah. possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are people that go that direction. Those that want to say honey is not kosher. But we'll get to that when we get to what uh, it is. <laughs> Because bees are not, so no, yeah, we'll get to that. No, no, well, the Jews we'll are, get to that. It's not an issue for Jews. I know it's not an issue for Jews, but uh, we'll get to that. I don't uh, want to. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves into pedantic. If you think this is pedantic, just wait until we get to Leviticus. It's going right. to get fun. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, you enjoy that sort of discussion. It's like our numbers drop. <laughs> so I suppose that Robert Alter earlier commented on El Shaddai. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's a difficult. Yes, he did difficult to, to to actually translate it usually it's translated as god almighty but robert alter probably has some interesting things to say about it but. yeah mm -hmm. now um <clears throat> da, da, da. what interesting thing is is obviously they're just completely back is against the wall they come back and 
you know, he's probably even aware of this. I'm not even sure if this is the first time they would have had the conversation because obviously they know it's a ticking clock. They're going to have to go back eventually, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to get to the back is against the wall. And they're like, okay, if we don't go back at this point, we're going to die. And they say, you know, if we could have gone back earlier, we could have gone back twice, right? So time had passed. I'm not sure how long the journey was between the two places, but it gives you a sense of it. But it's not super long either i don't think i don't know how long that journey was but i don't think you're talking like you know a, a ridiculously long amount of time i don't know i want to go back to, to 36 yep 30 chapter 36 no no oh. 42 36 42 36 what yeah. was your comment about how long we yeah till we don't exactly we know. don't know exactly how long it was but they said you know and i understand they're probably speaking a little loosely but they said we could have come back and forth twice so that kind of gives you a sense of how long Simeon was. Yeah, which is kind of. Which know, is pretty sad. long. Kind of sad. Yeah. It is. It is sad. And it's kind of long. But on the other hand, it doesn't seem like. I don't think that'd be years. I think that would no, be. I think no. that would be fairly short. I don't think they lived that far from Egypt. But but anyway, when he says you have bereaved me, mm -hmm. I think what he means is that. Me, you have bereaved is how he translates yeah, it. Yeah, uh, right. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. Yeah. In other words, Simeon is now in jail. And now Benjamin is going to be going. So I don't think he's blaming him for Joseph so much as he's saying, you're causing me all this grief. Yeah. You know, it's uh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting yeah. Um, that Alter thinks that you could read into this because he says Joseph is no more and Simeon is no more. And since he doesn't actually think that Simeon is dead, that he is holding out hope that Joseph is still alive. Just removed from the picture right now. Yeah, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very. Interesting. And also, that gets back to what "no more" means, right? Because when he says Simeon is no more, his assumption right. is not necessarily that Simeon is dead. He's just out of his life. So again, it's it's ambiguous. It's ambiguous. But clearly they were talking in an ambiguous way to Joseph. You know, they weren't really revealing their whole hand. Now, what is interesting is when he says, too, it's like, well, why did you even tell them you have a brother? And it's like, I, you know, and generally speaking, yeah, it's smart to keep your cards close to your vest and not reveal more information a than fool, necessary. <laughs> a fool speaks all his mind. Yeah. It says in Proverbs. Right. But in this case, they wanted to be very honest because yeah. he questioned them very strongly you know yeah. as if they were spies so they wanted to be careful how they answered. and to their credit they had no idea it would escalate in that direction right, yeah because he was just he thought oh we're just asking us about information for whatever reason you know is your father alive is your brother alive you know so we're go okay how, did, how would we know i just wanted to uh take a look by the way as far as commentaries go you know of course a lot of them were written a long time ago mm -hmm. but they're still um valid i mean rashi after all goes back to the middle ages but uh <laughs> jameson fawcett and brown i think in the 19th century is a good one but also mm -hmm. very thorough in, in in thorough german style very long-winded also which is tends to be what what it's like when you read in german um is the kyle and dalich commentary because they very carefully analyze the words and it is translated into english so I'm just mentioning, if you're not familiar with Kylan Dalich, it's a good commentary to study because they're so so thorough. Yeah, but it's it's old. It's it's a lot. You know, I think it's also 19th century. But just want to mention that. Sounds good. All right. Any other comments about this before we uh, go to the next segment? <laughs> oh, uh, I was just. Looking at Kyle and Dalish as you, as you, you commented. No, I'm fine. Yes. All right. That's the kind of household we have. It's like, are you distracted? Oh, yeah. I'm just looking at some German German commentator on the well, Bible. I'm looking at it in English. I, I only had one year of formal training in, at the university level in German. Yes. So, uh, yes. Although I grew up hearing a little, hearing a lot of Yiddish, which is yeah. similar. My dad's one of those polyglot types. It's like, well, you know, I've dabbled a little bit in this. <laughs> Which I'm yeah. not. I am very. I I love English. I love liter literature, and I love dealing with the English language. But I'm not particularly skilled in other languages. But maybe you are, and if you are, <laughs> comment below yeah. about different things that come to mind as you are watching this. And please like, subscribe, hit the bell, and we will see you tomorrow.